Rugby on this weekend, folks. Scotland and Japan. Uh, could be a pretty interesting game given uh, the recent history between the sides. Should make things a little bit heated. But um, yeah, Scotland and Japan. We'll go over some of the stats, the squads, and um, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one might end up going. Um, Scotland, well, they lost last week against the Springboks, but I think it's been a pretty positive uh, November uh, with the yeah, big win over um, Tonga and then a, a kind of solid win against Australia. Losing to the Springboks was obviously a bit of a dampener on it, but I think there'll be confidence levels pretty high. Uh, Japan have been on quite the losing run until they played Portugal and uh, beat them 38 points to 21. I haven't seen that game, but by all accounts, Portugal gave a pretty good account of themselves. So um, it's not kind of all been rosy for Japan post the World Cup. There's been a bit of a post World Cup hangover, but I suppose no games in 2020 probably didn't help that. Um, recent history, yeah, like I said, it's I mean it's mostly in Scotland's favour, four to one, dating all the way back to 2013, which you can kind of take that with a bit of a grain of salt when Scotland won 42 points to 17 all those years ago, but I mean, that most recent one, 28-21 in Japan, is the one that Scotland fans will be looking to um, have their team kind of get one back over, and uh, maybe the Japanese guys will take a bit of confidence from that one, although this time they are at Murrayfield. Um, for the squad, Scotland have made a few changes. They got Batty Turner and Fagerson in the front row. Turner is, um, is back into the squad. I think he had a knock, right, in... One of the early games had to go off kind of pretty early, uh, but he's back, which is good. McAnally drops to the bench. Uh, Batty gets a start ahead of Pierre Schoolman, who is down to the bench after starting the last couple. Uh, Cummins is back into the squad as well, which is a bit of good news because there's kind of been a bit of a lack of, um, just a lack of locks in Scotland with injuries. So good to see Scott Cummins back in. He's alongside Gilchrist, who retains his spot. Uh, Richie moves back to six with Watson coming back to start at seven after being on the bench last week. I think Watson's played a lot of rugby after coming back from an injury, so it was kind of maybe not too surprising they didn't play him for the full game last week. And then uh, Bayless is back in the squad at number eight, so Matt Fagerson drops to the bench. So yeah, lots of changes, but last game of the uh, autumn for these guys, so I think Gregor Townsend's kind of got to give more guys a run. Uh, Ali Price and Finn Russell's the same 9-10. Uh, Sam Johnson's back in at 12. I'm pretty chuffed about that, actually, because uh, I thought he looked good for the two games that we've seen him play. And uh, Chris Harris is still there at 13. Darcy Graham's back in at 14. So uh, Rufus McLean drops out. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of a good introduction to the international game for him, but uh, maybe not one that you want to overwhelm him. And Darcy Graham still, you know, he's a class player, so he needs some time. Uh, Duane Van der is still there on the other wing, and Stuart Hogg is there at 15. So it's kind of stable, but with changes, if you kind of get what I mean. Uh, McAnally Schoolman and Javin Sebastian uh, are the front row replacements. Sebastian will be on his debut. I think I've seen him play for Scarlets, but I wouldn't want to be quoted on that. Uh, Sam Skinner drops to the bench. Dylan Richardson will also get his debut. Him I've definitely seen play for the Sharks. He's a really useful player, very kind of high work rate and good skills. Uh, good ball carrier as well. Matt Fagerson's there too, so I mentioned like so it's a 6-2 split on the bench. Horn and Kinghorn are the only back replacements. So maybe that's an indication they're going to try and kind of bully the uh, the Japanese guys up front. We will have to wait and see. Uh, for Japan, they got Miller, Sakate, and Ivalu as their front row. So it's kind of the same front row that's played when they've been uh, not playing Portugal. Basically, I think that's that's been a pretty solid front row. Um, or was it was it Ivalu? No, it's been Ku. Ku is not playing. Ivalu's usually been on the bench, but Ivalu did start last week against Portugal. Uh, Moore and Cornelson are the locks. That's kind of the same duo that we're used to seeing uh, when Van der Volt's not available. So Moore's back in after resting against Portugal. I'm not sure if he was resting or if he was injured, to be fair, but uh, he's back in either way. Uh, Leach, Labuskakni, and Jimeno are the back row. Labuskak, he didn't play last week, but he's back in and he's captain. He's had to make, uh, well, he made a fair few tackles against Ireland. Uh, that's for sure. Jimeno, if you haven't seen him, you'll enjoy watching him because he is, uh, I've mentioned it numerous times. You would have seen him at the World Cup, even if you don't know him. Uh, real big ball carry, good over the ball as well. Played here in Super Rugby uh, for the Highlanders for a season and got man of the match more than once, I think, because he's just absolute class. So he should be a favorite for everyone to watch. And then Michael Leach. Uh, who was captain of Japan at the World Cup. 
he's there as well. So, um, yeah, I haven't seen him play yet because he was out for the Australia game and then for the Ireland game as well. But good to see him back. He was kind of a late scratching uh, when he pulled out injured. But, yeah, good to see him back. He's getting on. Maybe his body letting him down a couple of times. But, yeah, either way, good he's back. Uh, Nagare and Matsuda is the 19 combo. So, Tamura is on the bench, which is an interesting one to see. Uh, previously, it's always been Tamura at 10, but they seem to be kind of swapping the minutes a little bit. Maybe it's helping to build that bit of depth as well. Nakamura and Nakano are the 12-13 combo. Uh, Lafaele is always there at 13, so I'm not sure what the deal is. Uh, he's not on the bench either, so I'm assuming he's injured because when he's available, he pretty much always plays. Uh, Matsushima's on the right wing, moves from uh, the bench. Fafita's on the left wing, who's a big unit of a man. And uh, Yamanaka is there at fullback. Uh, the bench, Horikoshi drops to the bench as the reserve hooker. Inagaki is back in as the reserve loose head. Uh, Kakinaga is the reserve tight head. Gunta, we've seen him play a couple of times, uh, I think in the Ireland game and against the Aussies as well. Uh, he's looked all right, but again, still pretty early on in his international career, which is a couple of caps. Tatafu, another big unit who will likely come on uh, at number eight. They may just tell Jimeno to go kind of gangbusters for 40 minutes and then bring on Tatafu, or they may uh, switch Leech because as I said, he's, he's getting a, a wee bit on. Uh, so they may switch Leech after half time and uh, put him in on the blind side, but we'll see. Uh, Saito, Tamura, and Riley are the back replacements. Um, so yeah, three backs on the bench for them, different from what the Scots have done. Um, stats wise, it's kind of going to be interesting to see how, how Scotland go. Like I've seen the fact that they've got an extra forward on the bench and it makes me think they're going to go physical. I expect them to maul. Uh, they mauled a lot against teams where maybe they had a bit of a physical edge, but not only against teams like that. Uh, they mauled a lot against uh, Tonga. They mauled a lot against Australia. Remember, they were getting kind of um, good forward dominance up against the Aussies when they had uh, issues with scrum time. Uh, but I mean, they also mauled against Italy a lot. They mauled against France a lot, even Wales and England. But it's um, like... South Africa, they didn't maul a lot, and uh, Ireland, they didn't maul a lot, but I would imagine we will see a fair bit of that against Japan. Portugal did a fair bit of it against Japan. I have seen the stats for that game, uh, but yeah, Portugal mauled a lot against Japan. Japan, on the other hand, they don't really maul it at all. It's kind of not their thing. There's literally games where they don't sit uh, any mauls. They like to move it quick. Uh, both teams like an offload. Um, Scotland more. Uh, both teams like to move it through the hands, so that's kind of hopefully making for an entertaining game. Scotland like to kick it a wee bit more. Um, but yeah, um, Japan, I did mention they were really more. They, they tried it against Australia. I think they, they set about five balls and only won three of them back. So that's why I don't reckon it's kind of going to be a thing for, for Japan in this one. So yeah, predictions wise, the rugby forecast algorithm has got Scotland by 18 points. So pretty comfortable favourites. Uh, the bookies over here in New Zealand go a step further by saying Scotland by 20. The average score across the last five games, which remember does go back to 2013, uh, is 31-17 to Scotland. So generally, Scotland have got the goods against Japan, um, especially when they are at Murrayfield. But yeah, you guys will have to let me know your thoughts. How do you reckon this one is going to go? I think this one's on at 2 in the morning here in New Zealand. So in all likelihood... I will not watch this one live, but I will certainly try to avoid social media and um, get up and watch it at some point. But yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts. How do you reckon this one is going to go? Scotland too strong at home, or do you think Japan can build on that win over Portugal um, to kind of stop what's been a bit of a bad run against the Tier 1 teams? But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts, and I'll talk to you soon. See you later.